self-confidence, the ability to accept who you are and how God has made you. That is something that we struggle with. We live in an era where people are body shaped, where fun is made of them, where they are even bullied because of their physical appearances. Not many people are able to accept themselves and as a result walk in the consequence of the perception of society and people. You look at the magazines today, they give us an ideal picture of what every woman should look like. They also dictate, together with fashion, what is the ideal woman. Well, my guest this evening is changing narratives. She's challenging dialogues and she's putting a face behind the weight proudly plus size. Join me as I converse this evening with Camorello Marke. She is an activist. She's very vocal in the space of self-acceptance and bodily confidence. She's part of the organization I Am Heart Plus Size and she's shaking narratives as she promotes self-acceptance. Sis, welcome. Thank you so much for having me. Um, um, I'm really blessed to have you to be here with you today because I feel there's so much that I needed to share with people. Mm. Uh, I think a lot of people think being a plus size woman or just being a plus size in general, you, you somehow lacking something. It's like you, you were not made like that. There's something wrong with you. You're not healthy. Mm. But with me, I, I love being me. I feel like I'm, I'm, I'm created to just be this beautiful flower out there mm. that is chosen. I can't want to a hollow. It's it's pretty. We always look for something big and beautiful. For me, I was chosen to come and just be the beautiful flower to represent women mm. and show people that with all my calves I am beautiful and to represent other ladies out there to show them that you know what, without having to have doubts with who you are, you are still beautiful with your own self-confidence, your color, your skin tone, your body size, regardless of how people see you. Mm. What pumps up this confidence in you? You know, um, I just introduced you mm -hmm. and you went right for it. You know, in that statement alone, you said, I am confident. Mm -hmm. You said, I am beautiful. Mm -hmm. And you said, I am an example. I am actually a voice for someone. But... Um, what is interesting to me is how that became a mojo for you. Because for most people, mm -hmm. it starts somewhere. I want to get to know how it started with you. I, for me, it's very unfortunate. But let me not say unfortunate. I was, I was sexually assaulted mm -hmm. at a very young age. I, I somehow stopped you know, socializing and being in front of people, being in public. I was just going to school. I was banking school not talking to people, keep her isolated. I just, I hated me. The reason why I hated myself was I felt like being, being a plus size at that time or being a chubby child. Mm. I felt like there was something wrong because if I was not chubby to me, I was not going to be raped. Mm. I felt like the person raped me because he saw someone older. I felt like there was something wrong with my body size. I felt I was just a different person. I, I was not loved enough because... I'm a plus size. So it began, um, uh, you know, with the rape mm -hmm. communicating to you mm -hmm. that my body got me here. Yeah. So naturally, you hated your body. I started hating my body. Mm. I started changing the way I used to dress. I actually became a bully in school. Mm. I became a bully in school because I wanted to fit in. Yeah. I, because the pain that I was feeling inside, you wanted I wanted to, to hide it. Yeah. I wanted to show people that I strong man ki 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 hyper whereas i was dying inside i became this dodgy child i would say dodgy because you look at me i'm smiling but then when you turn back i could throw a stone at you i would just be angry and i would hate myself either lena and there was just so much things that i was going through i i sat down with myself and just be like you know what if this man raped me then there was something wrong with me. Mm. Why do I even have to go to school? He ruined my childhood already. Yeah. Why do I have to go out there and still play and act like I'm okay? He, he, he just took away my childhood. He took away me. Mm. He took away everything. Yaka. At that point, I did not see the positive part that they can still be more to whatever that happened to me at that point. Mm. So that's why I'm saying it's, 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 a bit unfortunate. I can't say it's unfortunate now because I'm loving it. 
I the reason why I'm saying I'm loving this person that I am now is I feel like okay I was raped so what mm. Let, let's let's pause there mm -hmm. a minute so you get to a point where you hate your body yeah and um, did you ever have thoughts of inflicting harm on yourself yeah on this body mm. there were times I wanted to commit suicide so many times actually I remember this one time I had a container of pills I made a collection of pills. I did not even know what were they for. Every time I move at home and get a pill, I'll put it in the container. I was mm. just banking them in, in one collecting. place. Just collecting and collecting until <laughs> the very amount that I wanted. And then on that day, I was like, you know what? I'm going to drink those pills. Mm. When I got to the bathroom, I took water. And then when I was drinking them, I only put them in my mouth. And I was about to drink water. I was like, Mara, why? Yeah. Why am I doing this? Mm. And then I took them, I flushed them. I went out. But then something was like, Marakamu, you should have done that, man. There was yeah. something at the back of my mind mm. that told me, if you do this, you are going to be okay, free from all this pain, oh, yeah. free from all these things. Mm. The suffering that the you're suffering. going through. Yeah. But then it was like I'm caught in, in two voices. Mm. The other one says, okay, you can kill yourself. And the other one says, Mara, for ill. Why? Why? Mm. And the hateful part was that I had to see the very same person that was doing that to me from time to time. I have to see this person almost every day. And it, it hurts me even further. Like when I see him, I remember, okay, this person did this to me. It, it was just too much. Mm. So to me, I would say I hated my body at first. But loving my body was not as easy as, as something that you can just decide now. Mm. It, it, it came from a very, 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 very painful story where the second time I wanted to kill myself in front of my little sister. Mm. But she was young. And until this day, I don't think she had an idea of she what I was could not comprehend what was actually happening at that yes, moment. Yes, I used to say I needed a rope. But I knew I did not want it for that. Mm. I remember I took that rope. I can you see this RDP houses dinner yes. Tresses. Yeah. Mm. So I tried to hang a go. So I came the sofa and whatever that I'm doing, it's just not okay. I ended up falling. Mm. And then she was there. She was laughing. She was laughing like I was playing and then it didn't go well. I fell. But then I sat down again and I'm like, okay, am I going to do this again in front of her? If I do this, she's also going to do it. And she's not going to do it because she was raped. She's going to do it because my sister did it. Mm. And another child as well, she's going to do it again to say, mm. okay, but my neighbor did this. Yes. It means it's another way of running away from pain. You'll mm. be pain free mm. by killing yourself. Then that somehow um, gave me a thing of saying, I cannot continue doing this anymore. I am not hurting myself. I'm hurting people around me. Mm. And I, I could see that even if he raped me, it's fine. But then there are so many people that cares about me mm. than this very person. I don't know why he did that. I don't want to entertain whatever that he did. But I just thought it was out of his own selfish whatever mm. 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 that I don't want to entertain. But how about me trying to sit there and, and say, why, why does I change this whole situation mm. and find a better, you know, Example, I guess Kaba someone who trango committed suicide. Give mm. someone that my, my, my little sister would look up to. Mm. Mm. Yeah. So up comes the point where you now say, I'm gonna start loving myself. Mm -hmm. Um it is what it is. Mm -hmm. It's happened to me. I mm -hmm. cannot change mm -hmm. that. But where to from now? Something must come out of this. Yeah. When did you make that decision? Do you know? I I I, I was in town one time. And I met a group of ladies. I think there were three, three if not four. They looked so beautiful. Mm. They were plus sizes. And then when I passed them, one of them called me. It was like, hi, hello. And then he responded, who are you? What is your name? Ing Ing. I love your eyes. And I'm like, okay, thank you. But to them, Nekesa, to them I was beautiful, but mm. I did not see the beauty, whatever they were talking about. You're just being a tomboy, Mara. There's this beauty in you, man. And then I was like, oh, man, let me just give them attention because I was not going anywhere. I was just walking. I had this thing of just going to town and just do a window shopping and mm. stuff. So I gave them, you know, time. And then they told me they're from the organization, the I Am Heart Plus Size organization. It was still starting. I, I think it was still the first season. And then she was like, you know what? I would like to invite you to 
us maybe even if it's not a meeting just a short a, um, a shoot so you can see what other women do mm. how comfortable they feel in their own skin they would also share their stories and then you'll also be you know sitting with them and, and enjoying i'm sure you're going to love it i did not tell them at that time that i was going through such things i took their numbers and i was like Ugh, i'm not gonna go but i went home and said and i was like Mara, why not join these people and go? Not that I want to be part of the organization, but just one time just to go and listen to other people since I'm bored. For me, it was just going there because I am bored, not mm. because Kiela anything. So I went to, there was this lodge we went to, and then we went there, we took, they took pictures, I was just sitting. And then later on, we had some, a cycle. And then we sat down, and then one of the ladies was sharing her story with, with others. Um, she was sharing about being bipolar. She was bipolar. So they started sharing. Each and every one of them had shared their story. I felt it was touching and I had something to share with these people. But I was bottled up. Mm. Then we finished and we went home and they asked, do you want to come again for the other session? Because we saw there's something you want to share, but it was like uba emotional. Yeah. I will tell you. I think I took like three, four days. I'm the one who texted them this time to say, guys, when are you having that meeting? Mm. And then they were like, okay, let's do it this weekend. We went to, we had a pool party and then we had the other cycle again. We normally have a cycle where we sit as women and just share our stories. On that day, I was proud of myself. I don't know who made me talk. Mm. I don't know what touched me to talk. But I was like, you know what, guys, I, I feel like today is my day. I want to share with you what I went through. I told them everything. It was my first time sharing my story like that. I had to be open from how it started and how it makes me feel mm. and how dirty I feel mm. at that time. C can you share with us how did it make you feel? How did it make you feel? Yeah. I, I, I still feel like I, I explain it. Mm. You know, when you feel this person has to be the one protecting you and that person oh, yes. can I, I, oh, yes. I would run all those violates things. you. You yeah. do not know where to go. I, I would say be where to run to because even if you were to go to the next person, they wouldn't believe you because mm. I mean how? Because this person is here and Jani mm. and this person is so respected in the mm. community. People mm. love him. Oh jolly man, he's everywhere. Mm. One understand and Ugasiri I mean, he can get whatever or whoever or he wants, yeah. because of the way and in Gaon and he has mm. to look But then I was like, ki, ki mm. lang, wang understand. it made me feel like ki, ki dirty, man. Mm. It made me feel like maybe next to in this world. Mm. Maybe on Kweli. Maybe Mudimuli and on Kweli. You know, you get to a point where you start questioning or why you start questioning and it's 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 very wrong for you to start questioning mm. but wrong things at Lord Rahul you start questioning reach, yeah. mm. I I my my relationship with God just disappeared at that point. Mm. Um if you were to tell me that there is God I would say to you happy yeah. he there does is not no exist. God. Mm. Because to me I'm lost man belong I into I man, it was just it's it's an I I I explain it. Mm. How the my emotions laying? I remember I was bumped by a car when I was coming back from school because of the whole thing. Kita my le, my mom on Romila dropong. I went to town and then I quit that dropong. She said I must go give me submit a assignment somewhere. Ah, I get it's a new robot. Just went in. Guys, mm. because I do not see myself. You are just walking, Jay. You're just on autopilot. That is why I don't even know how I was feeling because mm. you are disappearing. There is no love, there is no feeling. Mm. Sometimes get Loma. There are things that I was doing to myself. Like every time I feel pain, what I do now, Kikori. I squeeze my hands, which is better. At that time, even training how feeling like I loma, like I just want to bite something, and anka I loma too much, then I stop. Mm. I feel better. So that is why I was able to share with those ladies on that day. I shared with them my story. And surprisingly, when I was busy sharing, one of them started crying. But then she said to me, Yanana story, Yanao Shapo Magala Reza Maile Joang. She started crying. And then she was like, 
you know the very same thing we were like happened to me but mm. next time I we were like because I felt like ke ke wrong aba tshwa ba nchi my family would be against me now but ro lo ba tlo rogana but then Lynn, at that time when she started saying those things I was like maybe my family is also going to be like that yeah okay i'm sharing it with these people what if these people go again by you share with with other people again and it's everywhere okay ganda was right mm. i shared with them and then there was one person utli lo tsona and she was new i get when you new you don't even know what it, there are things you need to keep kill out yeah, go out yeah. and say ah le money yeah you, you get that you Ooh. don't know the purpose of the group yeah, you don't know you do not know the, you know the heart of the organization mm. and, and the meeting and the sharing of that yeah, when she went and shared it on on, on facebook wow. but the good part is nasa mentioned maina but then she said those things but because i know what mm. it was hard then ah uh, well, one of the family members to go na but he bala those things to say okay rebona dilo je di so and mm. and 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 khani ko wa lebe le tsa mail le tsa mail le joang now i start go tla ke explain and 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 wabo then somehow things didn't go well at home my family started being somehow like probably tension conflicts yeah. and, and and tension and whatsoever but then i had to sit down with my parents and mm. then tell them you know what this is what i'm going through was it the first time you brought them into the picture in terms of you know or confiding in them letting them know what is it that you are go you are that you have experienced it was actually the first time because mm. at first i was like i would say it in passing that you know what um people are sitting here and acting like give a jehova and they know oh. what they're doing and i'll pass you know i'll just be a bully at home yeah. and say words that you would start asking yourself matter why is this person saying this i would never say it straight mm. but on that day i had to just be open and say you know what okay this is what went through what this is what i went through i told this person and this is the reason why she's sharing it she's not talking about somebody else she's talking about me mm. but now if i were to keep it to myself now it is going to kill me mm. and if you guys are going to love this person more than me it how you do not like me i mm. was never you know your child you need to support me mm -hmm. because i can never sit and start you know plotting things against mm. someone this is a huge wasn't. accusation yeah, you, you to make if it's unfounded and yeah. if your child comes to you and say this you need to give her attention ah. and that's when my mother started saying marakamo you were not saying anything mm. why didn't you say all these things okay and then she started pointing things okay you were acting this way on this day was it because you were feeling this way now she start checking mm. okay this day this happened and i feel like that's what brought us even close mm. my mother and i because we didn't have that relationship at first it wasn't that strong because i was acting up at home but then after hearing what i went through she kind of started giving me what attention yeah. she started listening to me she would ask me if i'm okay if i'm not home she would call to say come where, where are, are you, you? Mm. are you okay are you okay yeah if i don't eat did you eat there was this there was this love at home that just started at that time yeah. after sharing my story then somehow i was like you know what it means i was denying myself happiness i yeah. was denying yeah. myself um there's so much to this whole thing let me not see this in a negative way because i was bottling everything to myself i was not happy at home now after sharing everything with them I am happy. The organization does support me. I found sisterhood in them. At home there is love, there is peace. Why am I not sharing this thing further so mm. I can also help other people who are going through the same thing that I went through. Mm. So yeah, that is just how it turned out to just being a beautiful thing. And then at that time, I remember I used to hate shorts. Mm. Now I rock shorts every day. I love my shorts. I Wait, wait, wait. <laughs> I want to get to the part of the body confidence. Now. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, when did it shift where you where you where you start viewing yourself you know as not this dirty person as um not blaming your body and you start to appreciate you know uh, uh, the person that god has created you know the mm -hmm. the the, the uh, uh, um um you know the home that he has made for you okay. when did that shift take place that was uh, the first time i agreed to doing a photo shoot Remember I was only going there for just conversations yeah, and yeah. just talking to them. And this one time I was like, you know what? I want to also do the photo shoot. And they told me they were doing a lingerie shoot. I was scared. And I was like, I don't even know where I'm going to get such things. 
I, I read the boxer and whatever. Mm -hmm. I'm just being a tomboy. And then one lady was like, you know what? Don't worry. I got all this covered. When I just come to the photo shoot, I went to the photo shoot. I wore all those things. I was looking beautiful. I went to a mirror. Actually, I looked at myself and I was like, but this is not me. I kept on saying, but what did I do with the gamu that I had yesterday? Mm. This is not me. And then the first photo that I took, the photographer came to me and said, do you see how beautiful you look? Mm. And then I was like, mm. what is so beautiful about this? And at that point, <laughs> I was laughing to say, but how did I even do this? How did I even stand in front of the camera and take off my clothes and wear lingeries and take out my legs and everything? Mm. The very same things that I was hiding because I felt like the man saw my legs because I was wearing shorts at home and being a child, or maybe I was running around the yard or wherever in the neighborhood that people get to see me like mm. that. So I, I started seeing how beautiful my calves were, how beautiful my legs were. I started seeing, you know, loving my arms and how flabby they were. It was just beautiful. Everything that I had at that point, I was like, but I just have some extras, man. Mm. Why do I have? <laughs> Everything that I have is extra. Yeah, it means yeah. somehow God granted me extra things. I'm extraordinarily beautiful. Mm. I just, on that day, I was so noisy and loud at home when I got home to say, you know what, I took this beautiful picture. Wait for the pictures to come out. No, mm. I ask him, why? Look like, at those pictures. I'm like, yo, we just took the most beautiful pictures today. And then when we got home, they sent me the pictures. And then after sending me the pictures, I showed my mother, she was like, yo, Kamu, you were beautiful. Mm. And on that day, I took that one picture to social media, trust me. You trended. Yeah. You were trending. Yeah, yeah. Mm. It was beautiful. I was like, Mara, is this the same Kamakelo that I know? Mm. The same people that I had in high school who did not see how beautiful I looked were sharing the pictures. They were reposting the pictures. It was just amazing. It was mm. just that feeling where you feel, but I'm actually beautiful. And, and then I had this thing of saying, I, I feel like the very same person that taught other people, you know, that's lenders and those with beautiful sizes, so they call them, like, it, with beautiful sizes, or size 32s and 28, that they are beautiful. Mm. I feel like it's the same person that whispered in my ear to say, Kamakalo, you are beautiful today. Mm. Because I feel as beautiful as they feel. I even feel I'm way too beautiful than others look. Like, now I feel like the person that I am now, I don't feel like there's any other person who's as beautiful as I am. Mm. I do not agree to a person telling me that she's beautiful more than me. Okay, mm. you are beautiful, it's fine. But you can never be me. I feel like my beauty, just accepting myself and knowing how beautiful I look, I don't feel like there's any other person who could feel the beauty that is in me. It's, it's, it's about accepting yourself to say, you know what, with the body size that I yeah, have, yeah. this comes from within, I am beautiful without having to, 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 to seek validation from other people mm. or attention or um, men or whatsoever to tell you that, Kamu, you are beautiful. Mm. Telling yourself that you're beautiful is the best gift that you could get to get your confidence. Mm. Because if you cannot tell yourself that you are beautiful, trust me, you're not going anywhere. Yeah. You cannot walk out there without telling yourself that you're beautiful because you are going to seek that from other people to tell you that you are beautiful. And once they're not telling you that you're beautiful, you become moody, you your shrink. confidence shrinks. Yeah. Well, I'm speaking to Kamrelo Make. She's an advocate for self-acceptance plus size activist. And yes, she's pumping up all the confidence that we need in order to walk proudly and boastfully in who we are. Tune in for part two of my conversation with her next week as we talk all things I am a heart plus size. Thank you so much. Get yourself a copy of our latest books, The Mending of a Broken Vessel, and Maintaining Your Joy, a journal for daily positive living. Visit a bookstore near you.